Hello, ladies and gentlemen of the internet. Welcome back to the Every Game Ever podcast, volume number two. My name's ASF. I'm here, as always, with the Scrivener. Hello. Uh, and they didn't cancel us. We're back for episode two to talk about more video games that you have played because you have taken it upon yourself to try and play every video game in existence. Isn't that correct? That is mostly <laughs> correct, yes. <laughs> mostly correct. You're going to try and play every game in existence. I'm Doesn't taking a swing willing. at it. Yeah, you tried the best shot that probably anybody's ever had. And you wanted to do this just to kind of talk a bit more as opposed to the funny ha-has that you put on the video. You want to like d- drill a little bit deeper into these games, is that right? Yeah, we want to we want to capture some history. The videos are very silly at times. Um, for <laughs> at <memeing>. times. <laughs> YouTube memeing youth purposes mm. or whatever, but we need to document yeah. some of the straight it face. Dies- talk about the science as opposed to just flashing a number up and you making jokes at the whole thing. <laughs> there's room for um, both. There's room for both, which is why both of the things exist. Um, so we're going to start off with The Static Speaks My Name from 2015, which he gave a 5.375. This was like a PC indie thing from what I remember, right? It was one of those like narrative stories? Or is it a horror game? Was this with a horror one? It was super dark, uh, it was super small, and it was free so it was yeah it was super oh, super sure. indie um it's one guy from what i can remember yeah his name was jesse barksdale and one thing to note is i wanted to cover some small indie oddities for every game ever i didn't want everything to be a triple a thing so this yeah, was yeah. i think one of the first games i did i mean these are games you want to do every game these are games. yeah yeah for sure to the best you know and this is a this is a unique game and it's free so it, i mean i think it's fun to feed game criticism through the same evaluation machine formula I have for big games, just to see yeah. how these smaller budget things compare. So that's something I continue to try to do. As far as this one, uh, it's a dark game. It's it's somewhat interpretive. It's a little bit open ended, uh, but mm. it's fine. It doesn't do much. But I guess it's somewhat effective for the for the themes it wants to talk about, and it obviously had a lot of very hands on direction. Yeah, so it was, it was not much like going su- into it. Suicide and like mental breakdown and stuff, right? Was that yeah, how, yeah. That it's definitely it? sort of a extreme and yet subtle look at mental illness things, and hmm. you play a very. You're not really sure who you are. You don't. It's all in first person. You don't really get to see anything but sort of where you live and the horror of kind of figuring out what kind of person you are and. All the fun is in sort of symbolic interpretation. It's it's good art. There's really not much worth going into it um, from like a mechanical standpoint because it's super short. And to say too much is to kind of take away from the experience. And it's yeah, free. Totally. You kind of just need to sit down for 20 minutes. But personally, I like it. Like I looked at it fondly. It's it's fighting some. It's good, some good when fights. these games like this try and like deal with unique stories and stuff that games haven't really dealt with before, which is like suicide is definitely one of them. There are only a few games I can think of that actually try and deal with that in any sort of meaningful way. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's creepy. And for free, like, what are you missing yeah. out on? When? Yeah, so, might as well try it. Not the highest score in the world, but I also, that's not an indoctrination or condemnation. Yeah. Or word. Okay, so next, Bram Stoker's Dracula for the SNES, I think. Is that right? I think... I think I played the NES one. Oh god, it was on more than one. Jeez, okay. It, it was actually on a lot. It was a. It was. A, it had at least three different developers, Jeez. depending on which okay. version. I think I played the Nintendo Entertainment System one. Um, it clearly made quite a big impact on you. Then, if you give oh a score god, of two point yeah, eight one well, three, and you can't remember what you played it on. <laughs> obviously, it's a property cash in acclaim. Yeah. Type. I don't know if acclaim did it, but it wouldn't surprise me. It doesn't have the right tone. For a game that's about what it's adapting itself from, yeah, it has these like question mark power up blocks that look so much like Mario blocks that they could be probably like plagiarized. Like they look exactly mm. the same. Uh, it's really short, really unremarkable, uh, unlicensed garbage, and that doesn't even factor in that the film was for an audience that was probably over ten years apart from the target video game audience at the time. Yeah, so there's just nothing to this. It's just this is nothing worth even talking about in this game. Don't don't play Bram Stoker's Dracula. Is that your official none of them official standpoint? They're garbage. They're garbage. Okay. Well, we'll not talk about it very much then and move on to a game that is actually very very good, which is Mega Man X from nineteen ninety three. Nine point one three three, and I think this is the first nine game that we've seen so far on this podcast. It was um, for a while too. I think. 
personally, I think that is totally justified because Mega Man X is a fucking hell of a game. I love Mega Man X quite a lot. And I'm a big fan of like Mega Man 2, but Mega Man X is super, super good. Yeah, if you come out of like the NES generation of Mega Man um, yeah. at the time, it was one of the places where the SNES really put itself ahead of the previous gen. Yeah, um, like I did it like when I played them, because I didn't play them at the time because I wasn't young enough, I had I basically went back when I was older and tried to play like a bunch of the oh you have to play these games sort of games. So I jumped immediately from Mega Man 2 to Mega Man X in like the space of a few days and the jump was just insane. Like there was so much more graphical fidelity, like it played way better, it was the music was amazing and it was just this amazing like watching the development of this game over like quite a short period of time when you think about it. it yeah, was, yeah. It was one of the big Capcom properties. Capcom hmm. did it it came out Christmas '93. We we can talk about the great game, the silly great game distinction some other time. But this, for what it's worth, was the first one for EG with that designation. Yes. So there's that trivia. So <laughs> if you put Mega Man X and the SNES and Power on, this is I want to go through because uh, sometimes I take notes. Yeah. And this is I w- I wrote this down. This is the order you get things in when you power this game on. You get this really small minimalist copyright screen you get a capcom logo and their little jingle that they used to have Mm -hmm. and then the next startup screen is a laboratory log where a guy named dr kane logs into some sort of system and then you get the specs on x uh his head his chest his legs you know all these sort of lore type things he's made out of like like it's just super well developed and that's before you get to anything so they're using every part of the yeah, they're really so they're using speak. this kind of what would be just the general loading screen as like build for story and character and kind of setup for the entire game, which is very impressive. Yeah, they especially get, for the time like ninety three was there's not a lot of that going around in ninety three. Yeah, and they give you a head start on your protagonist and the background story, and again, that's before you reach the title screen. It's it's fast. It's yeah. tasteful. Um, so before you even start the game, you kind of already understand like who you yeah. are, what you can do, what's going on. Like it's yeah, very and, good start. I guess X is basically an android, right? I mean, mm. he's he's a man yeah. robot. Okay, so you've got the tech versus humanity stuff. Now we take that for granted now because that's everywhere. That's our whole life, yeah. smartphone culture and stuff like that. But but then tech versus humanity had more questions than answers, and it wasn't our life yet. And so the game starts, and you've got this colorful, colorful world, and you've got this minimalist interface. There's lots of enemy variety, and then I guess maybe the most scripted boss loss I can think of. You you can't beat the first boss, I think, and uh, yeah, the character yeah. Zero uh, comes in and helps you, and like encourages you, and tells you you know you'll get better. And it's just it's so effective because mm. your instant thought is I I I want to be where this other character is. Yeah. It's so, showing you showing you the more powerful character at the beginning to kind of set you on your hero's journey and yeah. show you where you end up eventually. Zero and that's like good parenting. Like the first level of this game is a better parent than a lot of people get in yeah. their lives. Like you know what I mean? Like yeah. But uh, it's it's an amazing thing to sit and watch. Well, the crux of the you choose levels too, right? Yeah. Yeah. All the all the levels are named after their bosses, and they're all environment different. And then when you beat a level, you get a new special move that can help you in another level. So it has this yeah, it's really much like routing the games. where you yeah. can plan and move through the game and go back and unlock different things. It's really really cool and well paced. Uh, you mentioned yeah. the music; hmm. the music's great. And yeah. Really like the music in that game. I really like the sprite work as well. Like it looks really nice. Like it's oh, very it's detailed for sprite work. It's a lot of talent and a lot of pride went into this game, and it still yeah. shows. Which is what you think when they say we want to make an SNES Mega Man game. You, you'd hope they would put some like a good amount of effort into it, which they obviously did because thing that came out at the end of it is a hell of a thing. Yeah. Excellent game. Yeah. So next, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from 1989, 3.188. This was what, NES? NES. Yeah. It was, all right, so here's the trivia on this one. Mm-hmm. This was the first video game I ever rented. 
I and was, your life and your actual real life. Yes. I was wow, okay. probably five or six I years old. Feel sorry for you, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm still trying to recover lost time mm. from having rented this game. So now you come you've come back to it with math in hand. You're oh, like, I'm gonna show you so how bad this God. game is. I had yeah. to, I had, I was really happy about renting this game. I had to wait until my dad finished this like contract work on a house. It was super late at night. It was a super late, hot Florida night, and my mom was reading the instruction booklet to me and telling me what video game bosses were and stuff like that. It was wow. So that's that's sort of my cherished memory where where this probably began. But uh, the game that's, sucks. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> game's terrible. Sadly, with a lot of games that you played when you were a child, not a lot of them actually hold up. Which is um, a shame. Have you, have you played this? Uh, I have not, no. There's a, the opening level is like semi-reasonable. And then the second level is a water level that's just the most hard, miserable, obnoxious oh, thing you can ever imagine. I've seen video of the water level and everybody talks about how bad it is. It's so I think hateful. I thought I remember this. It's so hateful. It's surreal. What is it about it? Like, why is it so bad? Is it just it's just control uh, bad? I'm trying to think it? of a... It's, it's like, it's very labyrinth. So mm. it's, there's a maze element to it. But like, um, I think all around there are like uh, electric, uh, like reef, and you know these small things, and like you just can barely move through the level. And every time God. you touch something, you die and start over. So it's just like you have no room to move at all. Because everybody hates water there. levels already. So what to make better water level than make it difficult to get around and difficult to move around? That seems like a great combination of things. You know, and you know what? At the end of the day, you're a goddamn turtle. If there's one thing. <laughs> yeah. The control should be able to it's let you do. Point. You, know you know should I mean? be able to move through water. Yeah. Like when Mar- like, right. I how do you feel about Mario 3's frog suit? Like he gets a frog suit and he can swim. Better. Oh, it's fantastic! It's, it's almost revelatory when you realize how good that thing is when yeah, you move in the water. Yeah. What are they doing here? So anyway. Yeah, I've got no idea. Half-ass but- licensing situation. If you look at the cover of the game, which will be showing on the YouTube version of this podcast, yeah. all the turtles, the bandanas are all red. Like they didn't even bother to distinguish the color it according to the character yeah. and it was a konami Man. game konami dev this so <laughs> that's a shame yeah i mean the whole tidal wave that is konami goes from they make really good things to now just no one likes them anymore so that's they've got some tenure yeah that's true um let's go back to the good games and talk about sonic the hedgehog 3 um 6.125 now are we including and knuckles in this or is this just sonic i just 3? played three i was gonna play okay. I was going to play Sonic and Knuckles as its own thing. Is sure, that, that's, that that's totally fair. Yeah, that's okay. fair. It's technically a sequel, so yeah, that's what I'm probably thought. okay. Yeah, they had the goofy like that's what DLC was back then. I know that this this game. Yeah, had you the, have the the clip and cart thing. That yeah, you, can you had to like, game it was with. like a game genie. You had to like yeah, flip it on much. top of another cart. Yeah, it's so weird. But yeah, uh, it was. this game is fine. Uh, Sonic Team dubbed it. Uh, Sega published it, obviously. And mm-hmm. for all I know, it may have been the last good Sonic game for a while. I don't know. I'm not really up on my Sonic history, and I know um, a lot of it. Yeah, so the, the the ones that I would consider good being, like, a quote-unquote fan of Sonic games would be, like, 1, 2, 3, say, Sonic CD. Okay. And then there's not really a good one until, like, Generations. Like, okay. that's that's a really good one. And then, obviously, Mania that came out last year is fucking fantastic. But um, you'll see that eventually, I'm sure. But... I- I haven't played one or two for every game ever yet, but I do know that this game I felt was mostly the same as the previous two. Yeah, so they're they're not terribly like mechanically different or anything like that, but they are just the thing that really gets me, the thing that I care most about in Sonic games, which kind of holds true today as well, is that the soundtracks were so good. Yeah. Like the Sonic Two and Sonic Three I think have an amazing soundtracks. I was listening to Sonic Three soundtrack like a couple of days ago. That's how good I think it was. But the the gameplay, yeah, you're right, it doesn't really change all that much. It changes in CD when you can like do time travel stuff, but one, two, three, they don't really have a lot of differences. This uh this game three here had I don't think it was in the previous ones. I'm almost certain it wasn't in one, and I don't think it was in two, where there were these mini stages that were sort hmm. of in this weird, um, different perspective. They they were sort Yeah, of that's more, the I don't know oh, if they were mode the seven, from. but they were definitely that's oh. what I was looking for, yeah. It's like the weird mode 7 scrolling thing where you go yeah. over the dots. Yeah, that was yeah, a Sonic yeah, yeah. thing. And yeah. those were a huge pace breaker. Yeah. Because pacing is I never, all... I, I never understood them either. Like, I didn't think they were that good. 
pacing is all Sonic has, really. He's fucking fast. Yeah. Like, that's, yeah, that's his thing. That's that. yep. So having the game stalled by those was, I think, a bad design misstep. I don't know. Sonic's hard to evaluate now because he was he was great to people, then he was shit to people, but people are still into him. I just know that yeah. in a vacuum, this game is, like, fine, but nothing special. It's it's like a competent, mm-hmm. fast-paced, mascot, action-adventure yeah. platformer. Well, I, I, I think that's fair. The, yeah. I care more about how it sounds than anything, so... Like that soundtrack will always be drilled into my head. I I have not played it in a while, so I can't exactly like give you anything on how it plays. I'll be interested to see what happens when you get round to playing Sonic Mania because that's like modern, so they actually try to like make it feel good as well as like everything else to do with a Sonic game about how fast it is. It, was that with a super recently released one? Yeah, it was like last year. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, it was like the 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 story behind Mania was like it was. Sega pulled on like a guy who made um like Sonic fan games. Like okay. he made his own engine for Sonic, like how he remembers Sonic playing. So he made his own game engine and they okay. used that to make Sonic Mania and it's fucking stellar. Like Sonic Mania is incredible. I look forward to that. Um, yeah. So enough about me talking about Sonic the Hedgehog, because I will just do it all day. Hey, you're Beyond as good as evil. anybody else, man, as far as yeah, sure. Sonic representation. Beyond Good and Evil, 2003, 7.712. Uh, people remember this game very fondly. Um, 7.712, yeah. so it's like at least fairly decent. So maybe they're not entirely much spoken in their love for this game from the past. No, I think I think it's quite good. Did you play this? Way back when. Way I've back, not played yeah. it in a while. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, man, that's 15 years ago. Yeah. All right. So, all right. So this game has some history. Ubisoft developed it. It came from a lot of different Ubisoft studios around the world, and it uses an engine they made originally for this game, and they called it the Jade Engine, which is the name of the game's protagonist. So Ubisoft put a lot of eggs in this basket, and people liked it, but it didn't sell, and it's still suffering from it because people are still waiting for a sequel to this game, which it seems like gets teased every few years, but nothing ultimately comes from it. Um, E3 last year, there was a a big, big CG thing that yeah. was Beyond the Good and Evil 2. So it seems like that thing is actually being made as a game now. But yeah, you're right. They spent years just kind of... There was that one CG cutscene of yeah. uh, the, pe- the pig guy by the side of the road that got bandied about for ages. Yeah, but yeah, it's... now it seems like they're actually getting to making it, which is good for let's, people. And let's hope it does well. Ubisoft is so I hope different so. now than they were Yeah. Then. Um, They're a completely different company. But this was planned as a trilogy because, you know, what fucking isn't. And yep. uh, they screwed the pooch some. So that's that's the outlying history. Now, the history that has an effect on how the game is viewed now, because at this point, like you said, it's it's what I referred to in the in the video, the, like the other video, as a, as a front lash, which is like a backlash, but the other way. Hmm. So it's... <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's where something is good, but nobody thinks it's good. And then there's this big movement where it gets cult status, but then yeah. that makes it overly played. <laughs> and then so everybody thinks it's better than it is. Sure. So it's gone that full is, circle. Seems accurate to that sort of game. So I remember playing it at the time and thinking it was like, oh, this is like pretty cool and different. And then the more I heard people talk about it and years later, I'm like, I don't remember it being yeah. like that. Yeah. Like it's it's, like, settle down. It's like it's, yeah. it's a very fine game. And yeah. I'll say this, Jade, the is the most moral protagonist in gaming, I swear. She runs an orphanage. She's super mild-mannered, even in her, like, combat. She's meditative. Um, Mm. So that's one thing that made her character really enduring, too. Uh, She's a great template to base a good video game protagonist on, as opposed to, like, a disjointed one, like we talked about before with Nathan Drake, or even, even Lara Croft or Samus or somebody who basically kill indigenous wildlife just because that's what the game asked them to do or whatever. And yeah, Jade is just constantly good. Yeah, I, it's been so long since I played that I can't really remember. But the, I guess that's kind of accurate. I want to talk. I can't about, remember how I remember doing everything specifically evil. I want to talk about because Ubisoft is such their approach. They're not at the EA level of like that AAA black eye mm. that people seem to have, but they're kind of getting there. Like all their games are yeah, very they're semi now. they're shy of it, but yeah, yeah. So, they do have some of the biggest franchises in gaming, like they own Assassin's Creed and stuff like that. Yeah, so Far Cry is a big one now, too. Yeah, Far, Far Cry as well. So why some of this commercials, commercialist uh, stuff matters with Beyond Good and Evil is that when you're in marketing, you blame the marketing above all else. The game was good, hmm. but it didn't do well. Well, 
it must be because we have a dark skinned, uh, like not very sexual female on the cover. So that creates big rifts in between creative and marketing yeah. because then they start wanting different things. Um, so as far as the game itself, it obviously suffers from trying too hard to be a trilogy. There are characters that appear and seem important, but that don't get real screen time. Uh, the gameplay is super ambitious. For... There's stealth, there's vehicles. And it's just not as good a game as it would have been if they just taken Jade and, and Paige and sort of stopped watching The Phantom Menace or whatever they were doing. <laughs> it's, it's very much that same yeah. vibe, that, that strange creature that can talk kind of thing. Um, yeah. It should have been a game about X or a game about Y, but it wasn't. They they sort of dreamt too big, and the franchise still suffers from it. But it's it's still yeah. a good game. It's but that's all it is because it's uh it's a good game. I mean, look at the look at the fucking title. Like how overblown and melodramatic is a is that beyond good it's, and evil? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, it's really kind of blown out for what that game is. Um, you expect a title like Beyond Good and Evil to be one of these like really deep, meaningful indie games that come out now. It's I true. mean, they tried. They tried to. They, they tried something yeah, new and novel, but the game is merely good. And yeah, you know, that's why I really appreciated the part at the time was it actually felt legitimately different, which was interesting in two thousand three. Yeah, um, they, next. they did a great job. It just it's well, not changing anybody's life. Like, yeah, true. It still won't, but who knows? We'll see what happens with Beyond Beyond Good and Evil Two. I guess here's hoping. That. Yeah, Adventures of Dino Ricky from nineteen eighty seven. <laughs> three point five six three. I don't even know what this game is. So I got, I got two copies of this fucking game as a kid because of like birthdays, relative sending gifts from being far. Like I wound up with two copies, which is amazing. Of the uh, I think this is Hudson Soft did this game, and I think that's the same group that did Adventure Island, which is a little mm. bit more famous, but I think it was mostly the same thing. I haven't played it yet, but I think Adventure Island is sort of more enduring purely because the title is more general. Um, sure. But this is like a bullet hell game where you move upward uh okay. konami now owns hudson soft so there's that bit of history but yeah sure. this game's shitty i don't know why dino ricky oh, who i guess is the protagonist was crossing prehistoric deserts and being shot at by prehistoric things that apparently could shoot things the jumping was really bad i, I died yeah. to a lot of uh like lily pad platforms i kept falling in the water it's yeah not, not a good experience i'm watching footage of this right now and it just looks really confusing <laughs> Like it's... stuff just sort of blends into the background, and which is not good for a bullet hell game. And then yeah. yeah, there's like these lily pad jumping puzzles that doesn't look very They're terrible. fun to do. It, yeah, it's, it doesn't platform well, so you can't gauge the jump sort of fairly. It looks <laughs> good for an NES game, and I think it auto scrolled up. Yeah, so it's it actually that bit of hard as well. I mean, yeah, I don't know. There are better, like top down. Shoot 'em up games that you could play oh, at that God, time. Yes. Oh god, yeah, yeah. This game, sure. like you play fucking Galaga or something like that. Like, uh, be yeah, yeah, Galaga's better. Yeah, no doubt. Galaga's better than the Adventures of Dino Ricky. That's true by a, by a margin. <laughs> yeah, uh, but we've not done the math on it yet, so we'll see what Galaga gets when you play Galaga. Um, next, also from the same year, nineteen eighty-seven, Street Fighter, the first Street Fighter, the, the first original one. Street Fighter. That's right. 4.656, where, was Ryu even called Ryu in this? I can't even remember. I thought I he you was, were supposed to be, but I don't know. I, suppose, I thought you were supposed to be playing Ryu, but I can't remember if he has called Ryu or not. I, I were, it's definitely the same character as yeah. the iconic one. I, the in iconic my notes, Ryu. I wrote it down as Ryu, but that may have just been me projecting you know, my years of playing the other ones. Okay. Yeah. So oh this, no, no, you do. You do actually play a Ryu. No, you're not crazy. You actually play a Ryu. Okay. Yeah. I knew. Well, you have to. That was the yeah, amazing. You, you could only play as Ryu. You could play as Ryu. Yeah. Yeah. I'm calling it the the lightning um, system of fighting, where you inexplicably can only control one person. This one way. person. Yeah. One single person. So this game is shit. <laughs> it's better it, than the Adventures of Dino Ricky. Apparently, it is. like but... numerically, it's a little bumped. Because mm. even though it's a shit game, it has everything in the quote unquote there's something there category, which is what takes it from like the bottom of the barrel video game to something respectable. Because yeah. uh it had six button controls, it had mm -hmm. special moves, uh like that were exclusive to different characters, which I don't think anybody had done. And Street Fighter Two obviously made the fighting game genre. It's the yeah. pinnacle one. And yes, it was massive, but this game Street Fighter Two and Mortal Kombat were the two that kind of yeah. drove fighting games to what they were. Yeah, and 
they the game you know you wouldn't have smash brothers melee you wouldn't have blaze blue without those games so this is the game that made street fighter 2 so i i do these in a vacuum yeah so it's still not good but like but it's important but the ideas it's, are there like it does yeah. have cool ideas on its own the i think it's I, I honestly think like relative to like a browser game on its own it's probably fine in two player yeah, I just one player was a quarter guzzler. Like the AI was absurd. I hated sure. playing against the computer. But like in 1987, I mean that's a long time ago. The technology is pretty primitive. Capcom, they made it work for them. Like again, it's stupid. You have to play as uh, Ryu. Oh, if you're if you're the second player, you have to play as Ken. So that's the yeah. matchup for two players. I mean, yeah, that's the, the classic Street Fighter matchup. Is Ryu yeah. versus well, Ken. Well, I hope you enjoy it. Because if you're playing this game, that's <laughs> it's all a pretty you good think. matchup. I mean, it depends on the game. Yeah, the matchup can be good or bad. Some of the but, um, special moves on the enemy fighters are just—they yeah. do like half or more of the damage, and the controls <laughs> are like horrible, unforgiving. Like it's a shit game, just you yeah, know, in an important shit game. It has it, yeah, you it has remember, its place. Uh, test your might, like the mini yeah. games, and you beat My up the car. Mash. It has those yeah. too. Yeah, it had oh, test okay, your might cool. mini games. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I mean, it, it invented a lot of shit. It didn't do anything with it. Yeah, like, six-button layout is, like, pretty important to yeah. the, the history of fighting games. Like, that's the, the base for a lot of fighting games, is yeah. six-button. And it, and it might be optimal, like, as far as what human beings can do with however many buttons in the genre. Like, they got it right yeah. on the first try, I think. Yeah. Which is... I mean... Not the only thing. Yeah, it, the the Nacho kind of hand rest position of like with an arcade stick is like three and three. So yeah, yeah they would have six one layer, and yeah, it's super important. Like it led to some really important stuff. Specifically, it led to Street Fighter Three Third Strike, which I still think is the best fighting game ever made. Um, I look forward to. It. Yeah, that one. You can you'll have fun with that, and then we'll have a long discussion about why I think Third Strike is the best fighting game ever. But that's not today. We're gonna move on and talk about Kung Fu from nineteen eighty four. Yeah, three point five nine four. This is Kung Fu for the NES, right? Where you're the little yep. guy in the white gi, and you yep. walk about kicking people. Yep. yep. You climb the dojo. You climb the dojo. So this was a request, and I'm positive it was a facetious one. <laughs> but here's why Kung Fu is a better game than you'd think. Okay. okay. It's got some things other games don't. It sucks. Okay. It looks, yeah. But with that, it's not good. Yeah. First, it's paced well. The premise is simple, but it and it sucks. But it's also only five levels, so it's sure you're not wasting your time. It doesn't wear it as welcome. Yeah, um, it's not meant as a grandiose experience or whatever, and it doesn't try to be. And um, second, it more or less helped invent the beat 'em up genre with almost no buttons or technology to do it. So that's something, and that's sure, yeah. and that's a big fantasy, right? I mean, that's part of yeah, the video totally. game experience is to be to be the Jet Li or whatever one of those guys in those movies, to be the hero and the guy so badass that a ton of bad yeah. guys can't keep him down. Kick 12 people in the face and yeah, watch them fall yeah. over. And yeah. that's, I mean, it, it doesn't recreate that catharsis, but it, the what you're doing is unmistakable. And on a hmm. game with shit, gra- or on a NES, that's, I mean, that's impressive. Sure. So, I mean, does it suck? Of course it sucks. It's a relic, but it's not a shameful game. <laughs> like, I would play this on my phone or something on a train sure, yeah, if yeah. I had no options. Like there's yeah, a lot of nothing else here. And I think okay. I don't think it made many mistakes for what it was. That's I think that's fair. Um I remember it being shit as well, but <laughs> I guess the, the the points that you get is shit, but the points that you make are fair. Like yeah. at least that it does some good stuff. It's not embarrassing shit. It's just no shit. Yeah. Fair. Last Super Star Wars from nineteen eighty two. Super Star Wars. Uh, this is SNES, right? It is, yes. Yeah, 5.875. I remember this game being way difficult, and I don't know why. I just have this memory of it being super difficult. It was not easy, 100%. Yeah. You are completely right. Developed by LucasArts, obviously, published by JVC Musical Industries of America, of all things. Wow. Yeah, good Good to know. So, yeah, that's I don't know why or what nice the hell that's trivia. about. But it's a, it's a side view, uh, shoot and slash kind of thing. It's got platforming, it's got some vehicle levels. It really only follows the plot of the actual movie of of A New Hope insofar as in between level cutscenes. Um yeah. and it has a really hard time of like stitching shit together. But it's a competent game. I remember really liking the third one in this series. Uh I don't think I played the second one as a kid. I did play this one as a kid and it 
it works. I remember a lot of people thinking that the Super Empire was really good. I just I never played it, but I I know people talk about it very fondly. Yeah, I'm eager to see sort of how that's my favorite of the films. So I'm sort of eager to see how they stitch together some of the really like important moments in that movie. Yeah. So this is a noble attempt, but it's certainly like not at the top of my list of games. This this sort of vague, it, it's video gamey, new setting, some stuff, some jumps, a boss kind of thing. Like it's fine. Yeah. Um, do you not like fight the Sarlacc at one point? I seem to remember. I think it's a boss at the end of the level. Jeez. It may be early, and it's it's <laughs> it's got like gimmicky shit too. Like your health bar is a lightsaber. Yeah. Like there's no reason for that to be that except. Hey, look. It's a Star, Star Wars, Wars game. Yeah, yeah. Look at the Star Wars thing. So yeah. that's not really formalistic. That's just putting Star Wars shit on the screen. But you know what? It, I it, mean, you know what? It, it made me want to play like Lego Star Wars or something. Oh, yeah. That game yeah. is really good. So yeah. I, like so it, like, I was like, you know, if I'm going to be playing Star Wars, I could probably do that. I mean, if you're going to be playing Star Wars, you could play like Kotar or something uh, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. If you wanted to do that, that would be what I would recommend if you wanted to play a Star <laughs> Wars game. Speaking for me personally, who thinks Kotar is the best game ever made? Oh, but that's... A big Kotor guy. Yeah, but yeah, that's all we have for so today. I've got some. I've got some real quick mailbag. Oh, go for it. Okay, I didn't so, even realize we had a mailbag open. What, but okay. Oh yeah, just I opened it up, buddies. Uh, Elric asked, uh, "What games were most anticipating for 2018?" And he, oh jeez, he clarified in saying not games I'll play for EGE because who knows? So just like games, all actual, games, yeah, like new games. I mean, that's good for me because I'm not the one doing the science behind um, <laughs> this, so that's good. Uh, so what have we got for the rest of the year? I think that if Red Dead Redemption Two comes out this year, I that's think that'll... that's the one that jumps out at me. Yeah, if that comes out this year, we don't even know because it's a Rockstar game and they can yeah. choose whenever to release their games. Yep. Um, that God of War looks really good. That new God of War game. Is it a what are they? Is it like a reboot? No, it sort of. It's just called God of War again, except now he's like Kratos is older and okay. has like adopted a son, okay. and the combat becomes less like big theatric killing twelve dudes all at once and more like focused one v one. It's a yeah. lot more intimate. Okay. So it looks it looks like it could be really interesting. Um and of course I'll say Kingdom Hearts three if that comes out this year. I'm excited sure. to play that. I'm um, excited. I don't know. I don't know what's coming out. I'm just getting into CRPGs, as you all know. So mm. I don't know I'm I'm so proud of you. Yeah. Yes. You're on you're playing Neverwinter Nights. Yes, right? I'm playing the enhanced edition right now. Yeah. So I'm looking for Oh to yeah, I should I should out. say fucking Pillars of Eternity too. That comes out in like a month. Yeah. I'm excited for that. So I'm looking forward to those Red Dead Redemption 2 is the big one. I'm sure there are more, yeah. but that's the one that jumps up. Okay, I and think then, that Red Dead 2 has a potential to be a lot, considering how good Red Dead 1 was and how well we remember that game. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a lot to do. Uh, Obey asks, uh, Dear every game ever, which is funny. <laughs> you know, um, Alright, stay with me on this. Given every game ever is objective... What criteria yeah. axis has the largest delta between your personal preferences and the objective grading criteria? So I think sure. I think so. Is he, so is he basically is, asking what game had the biggest difference between what you think and what the number was? Yeah. Um, sure. So that's that's you. I've got that's all you. Dead Space is the one that always jumps out. Sure. So what did you give Dead Space? I'm, I'm pulling up the index right now. I've got it all sorted out. Um. It looks like Dead Space I gave... And we're eventually going to talk about this formula and all that. Yeah. It's inevitable. Yeah. Still looking for Dead Space. I think I thought it was in the sevens. 7.412. <laughs> sure. Okay. And I did not like that game at all. No. Okay. I hated it. Wow. That's, but it, but, it, I, but I, it was undeniably technically fun. Like, yeah, I'd, I'd I'd say that Dead Space was about a seven uh, to me. Like I liked playing it. I don't know what your problem was with it, but it's, <laughs> we'll get to that. But I don't know what your fucking problem. Is. Um, <laughs> Alan Wake is another one. Alan Wake did well. Oh, Alan Wake got that does, that, wait. You did like Alan Wake? Uh, it got a seven point four four one. I did not. Mm-hmm. I mean, I didn't hate it. Sure. It, but okay. it I would have thought things that I didn't like. A, a, 
Silent Hill esque horror game about a writer would have hit you in all the right places. It but, did I guess. for until like the third time. Um, like the third level was like the first two levels were forest levels. And yeah. then the third one, I was in the forest again. And I was just like, is this, ah, okay. this sort sure. of... Just, yeah, you do spend a lot of time in the forest. Yeah, because they didn't want to dev more levels. Hmm. But, it, I mean, it's good. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. Yeah. Objectively, it's fine. So, uh, what are you playing now? Let's get in our plugs and such. Uh, well, I'm playing now. So, I'm playing Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition, as you say, reliving my childhood. So, that's really interesting. Because we were talking about this earlier in the show, is like the going back and playing stuff that you remember from when you were a child. It's interesting go- going back on it now that I'm an adult and seeing all the holes in it. Yeah. I'm still enjoying it. I still think it's a like a really solid like D and D game, but there are definite problems with it. And I'm also playing Nino Kuni Two: Revenant Kingdom. That just came out. Uh, right? It did just come out. Okay. Came out like last week or something like that. Sure. Uh, but I really like Nino Kuni One, and I really like Nino Kuni Two so far. Um, yeah. It's a very charming game. It's a lot of uh, very like quirky writing and really well styled because it's supposed to be like a studio ghibli thing yeah um but yes yeah, it's just a really enjoyable little jrpg um what are you playing for every game ever just now uh i'm playing some heavy hitters my goal is to bring up the average a bit um okay i'm playing i should be done with witcher 3 basically any day cool. i want to be i just don't want to be because I want to keep that, yeah, for it. I, I would. I would hope that that game's a heavy hitter. I would yeah. hope that the math isn't so bad, but that <laughs> thing skews it. Um, I mean, yeah, Dark Souls Three. I'm feeling like I'm approaching the end, and I've enjoyed sure. it greatly. Um, Ocarina of Time still happening. Uh, Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, there's. I'm playing <laughs> quite a few. Fire. I'm still. I'm stuck on one fight on Fire Emblem Birthright, which is embarrassing. Essentially, I yeah. can't beat a fight without losing somebody, and I've got like permadeath on, so I reset. It's, just, it's a whole. But like a lot of the point of that game is to lose people. Like that's yeah, you, you just have to let go at some point. Maybe, maybe that's. I'll why be I really need. interested. I'll be super interested for Metal Gear Solid <laughs> because what I hope is that the the delta on that is really high because I know you really don't like that game. <laughs> so I'm hoping no. that the math comes at the other end of it and it's not terrible. Well. 